Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss chemical changes. So today's essential question, what is a chemical change, and how is it different from a physical change? All right, so an overview of chemical properties, and to do that, we need to compare them with physical properties. So a physical property of matter is a quality or condition of a substance that can be observed or measured without actually changing the substance's composition. Okay, so after doing science on it, after observing it, measuring it, whatever, you still got the same thing you started with. That would be a physical property. So any property of matter that can be measured without changing its chemical makeup. Examples of physical properties include mass, volume, density, color, texture, melting point, and boiling point. Okay, so if I take my weight, you know, I'm measuring that, but I'm not, I'm not, it doesn't change my size just because I take my weight, right? So that's what it's meant by not changing the, the substance's composition. A chemical property, on the other hand, are properties that can be observed only when substances interact with one another. Okay, and that's basically a chemical reaction. Um, so a chemical property is how two or more substances interact with each other. Um, you cannot observe chemical properties by looking at only a single substance. And when chemicals interact with each other, they're going to change. So a chemical property is, to study it, you're actually changing the substance's makeup. All right, on to chemical change. And by the way, chemical change is, that's really chemistry. That's the real deal, and we'll be getting there pretty soon. Okay, so whenever one or more substances are changed into one or more new substances, a chemical change has occurred. A chemical can change always results in a change in composition or makeup of a substance. Okay. Chemical change results in the formation of totally new substances. So what you start with is not what you end up with. So an example of chemical change are burning paper, digestion, cooking, rusting, rotting, photosynthesis, fireworks, or bomb explosion. So think about it. If I start with paper and if I burn it, when I'm done, do I have paper anymore? No, I have a pile of ash. That's something completely different. That's a chemical change. Digestion. I eat something. When I'm done eating it, it goes into my stomach. When it comes back out, is it the same thing that went in? I don't think so. That is a chemical change. All right. Evidence for chemical change. The, um, so below is a list of observations that suggest a chemical reaction is taking place. You absolutely need to know this list, and this is stuff you will observe throughout the year in our labs. So the produ production of a gas that's seen as bubbles. The formation of something called a precipitate. That is when you take two liquids and you get a solid that forms. And just so you know, that solid doesn't necessarily need to be a big old boulder, a big old rock. It can be powdery, okay? And you'll be seeing a lot of that. A change in color. This is an important one um, for two reasons. One, it, it, it's, it's something we see a lot. And two, there, it can be a point of confusion. Okay, so for example, if I mix a blue solution with a clear solution and I get a light blue solution, that's not really a change of color. When we talk about a change of color as evidence for chemical reaction, I mean a change of color that you wouldn't predict. Okay, I mean, it would be obvious if I have a dark blue solution and a clear solution and mix them together, I'd end up with something lighter. That's, that's something we would suspect, expect, so that does not count as a change in color for evidence of a chemical reaction. However, what if I mix a blue solution with a clear solution and it turns out orange? That's evidence for a chemical change. Okay, also the release of energy in the form of heat, light, or sound. Chemical reactions. A chemical reaction describes a change in composition of a substance. Okay, so during a chemical reaction, one or more substances is changed into one or more new substances. All right, so we have an equation here. This is called a chemical equation, and this thing represents a chemical reaction. Okay. So two terms you need to know, and you're going to become very familiar with them as the year goes on. But we have reactants. Reactants are the things you start with. Okay, so we're, we're starting in this case 
we have something, we have two C2H6s, and we're going to mix that with seven O2s. Those are the reactants. Products are the things that you end up with. So by mixing the C2H6 and the O2, we end up with six waters and six carbon dioxides. So you can see that this is definitely a chemical change. We start with something, they interact, we end up with something per totally new. All right? All right, let's talk about the conservation of mass and matter. So during a reaction, chemical bonds are broken and atoms are rearranged to make new substances. Okay, and if we go back a slide, you'll note that we have all the same atoms, right? We have C's here and C's here. We have H's, we have H's, we have O's, we have O's. Okay, so we use the same atoms, but those atoms are rearranged into something new. So in any physical or chemical change, mass is neither created nor destroyed. It's conserved. The number of atoms of each element is conserved during a chemical reaction, and this means the mass of the reactants, again, the things you start with, is the same as the mass of the products, the things you end up with. So today we talked about a quick overview of chemical reactions. Okay? Um, we are going to spend an entire unit talking about chemical reactions. So this was just a quick overview. And I'm done. I'll see you tomorrow.